Boom, Chinch. Riding hot on a Wednesday morning, man. What's going on, brother? Hot Wednesday. I just had a sneezing fit right before we came on, so I'll just... Uh, you did? Wait, funky. why? Why are you, why are you sneezing so much? I what happened? Stu got on my lap when me and Boo were preparing for the show. <laughs> I think I got a little, a little hay Dude, are you, a, are you allergic to Stu, your cat? I actually have a little allergy towards him, but... <laughs> It's all right. He's worth it. Dude, dude, before we get going, I got a quick story. My 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 sister and her husband Chip, they had these two cats, Ernie and like Ronnie. For, for dude, my, I'm telling you, my brother-in-law <laughs> is deathly ill of cats. Like no seriously, like this cat had to go to the hospital once a week and I was like, "Are you guys going to get rid of the cats?" <laughs> they went to dude, they went to drop the cats off one time. They went to give them away. And 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 Chip dude, it was like a drug deal. Deal, but it was a cat deal. They pulled up. It was like, turn the car around. <laughs> I, love, I love Ernie and Ronnie. I love Ernie and Ronnie too much. I'll, I'd rather die with 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 lymph nodes the size of oh freaking hot air balloon than than freaking get rid of these cats. So, dude, for twenty years, the cats just died like two years ago, what? three years ago, and my my brother in law just grinding his ass off for twenty years just for the for the sake of Ernie and Ronnie. Almost Good died. That, that's, a, that's another note. So, don't do that, Chinch. No, I'm not going to do that. If Stu gives you too many problems, he's got to go. Stu's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? All right. Uh, uh, let's talk. So we got a lot to talk about. We got the boo coming right here. Yeah. But, but before yeah. we get to that, we got history. History in a book yeah. in baseball. What do you got? Judge? Incredible, dude. Incredible. What's so great is 62. We were waiting. He got the 61. You know, it was that whole thing. Oh, he's over for seven games in a row. He got 61. And then to get 62 in the first inning, first at bat, you know, you know, for everybody coming out, like it really feels like it means something. You know, I think that's what's that's what's great about this. Is like you go back to Bonds, Sosa, and McGuire. If you look at if you look at that stretch, when 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 Bonds was hitting sixty something every year, McGuire made his run, and Bonds hit you know seventy three. It was a four year stretch of history. Yeah. So when you go back and look at the hundred fifty plus years of of baseball, it the numbers are what they usually are. Right. So yeah. for this to be 62 and for Schwarber to be second at 40 something, mm. this is historic stuff. So, you know, he's the first guy to not be connected to PEDs to break the record. And I feel like this number 62 is back in baseball. It means something. So, you know, like for that. judge to do it with, 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 you know, on the second to last day of the year, that 62 number, man, it just feels good, man. You, you do. What about you, Chinch? You're a Yankee fan. Oh, you know, great. what does it feel for you? You know, Maris and you know, the number and, you know, well, what do you feel? What I feel, first of all, sign him. End of story. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. stop. Uh, but second of all, like, it, it's it's awesome. It's like surreal. I'm still kind of taking it in. I was, I, I love reading all the newspapers around here and all the kind of stories about it. His mom's reaction was absolutely awesome. It was almost like relief, like the relief of a mom for all that stress that Judge must have had. Right. I mean, it just tells you about the guy. Like, first of all, you can tell every player on the team loves him. Second of all, you can yeah. tell like. To see him smile rounding the bases was really cool because you could tell he was like, like again, like the weight of the world on your head. Remember in 61, Matt Maris lost all of his hair because, like, yeah. there's a lot. I mean, that's got to be a lot yeah. of stress he was going through. And it bent. No, in the first inning, that was even better because then you could just sell it. You could just relax. Like, the Yankees could relax for the next two days before they get ready for the playoffs. I, I, right. There's nothing, there was nothing I didn't love about this thing. It's, it was awesome. And yeah. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Judge is a perfect guy for it. Nobody deserves it better. Yeah, incredible, dude. Incredible guy. And, like, you know, you love how he soaked, he has been soaking it all in, too. Yeah. So, yeah, incredible for baseball. You know, awesome. Nice. Really awesome. All right. Well, and, we, dude, one other, one other quick thing before we get the Lambuski on, which he's chomping at the bit yeah, right now, is. dude. He's like a freaking caged animal in his cage <laughs> yeah. right now with, with, with six ribeyes in the corner just waiting to talk <laughs> fantasy. Yeah. Waiting to talk fantasy. But um, yesterday, really quick, you know, I gave out Albert Pools at the Pirate oh, yeah. game. I gave, we gave Albert Pools and Yachty Molina, you know, these awesome bases that, you know, local artists here in Pittsburgh did. Incredible. This guy's incredible. Um, and, uh, it was just one of the coolest things, and one of the one of the greatest things was Tim Gephardt, who's my um, who who who's the you know, head of the Miracle League of South Hills. He came in from Seattle. He's here, and I said, "Bro, he's the biggest Cardinal fan ever." And I told him I was doing. It. I said, "It's like you got to get on the field field with me. We're gonna get a picture for you so that you can brag to your friends the rest of your life." So sure enough, man, the game's about to start. Debbie's over there. You know, he's on the you know field. We got him field passes. I'm like, and I'm literally like, I'm like, let's go, bro. Like when Pujols and, and it was like it was like when they start walking off you got to get in yeah. so they're like all right guys the game's gonna start 
I'm like, Gibby. And I'm like, Albert. Because, you know, Albert and I, obviously, yeah. we, we're, we're, not, we're not friends, but we played against each other for seven sure. years. Cool. Two all-star games. There's a mutual respect there. Yeah. I'm like, Al, real quick. Can you, I'm like, it's like, I just want to introduce you to my, my friend, Tim Gephardt. So, 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 Gebby is so starstruck, bro. Uh -huh. Albert, Albert Pujols goes to, um, goes to shake, uh, put his hand out for Gebby. He walked big leagues, Albert Pujols. Walks what? right by the handshake. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He just oh, big league no. Albert Pujols. Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> so, he walks in right between Molina and Pujols. And next thing you know, you know, we get this picture really wow. quick. I have my buddy Jimmy T. Take it. Got the picture. He's gone. But incredible moment Amazing. for... It was it was cool for me to see Pujols and Molina, you know, get to get that chance to say congratulations to Pujols for 700 some homers, and for my man Tim Gebhardt to get that picture. I was like, let's get it, you know, when you do so cool. when something good when something good happens for your buddies, you're like, let's go. So yeah. those are my two things. Lambuski time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Wednesday morning, we got the fantasy football stuff happening. Boo's chomping at the bit here. Boo, talk to us, man. What did you get? Your week four recap. How, first off, how are you doing? Second off. <laughs> Give us a week four recap from the Lambuski himself. Let's do it. You know, gentlemen, I just listened to you <laughs> two for the past five minutes. And, you know, make no mistake. Like, I have my opinions, okay, on a lot of these things, all right? Because, you know, I happen to play 10 years of professional baseball. You know, I ran across a few guys in my day. And six I think championships. Six, six championships. championships, indeed, indeed. And and I think, Sean, so many emotions and things happened when, when I heard you guys speak. 62, incredible number. I mean, baseball, if you think about baseball in the way, it's always just come back to, like, that pure, great game that we love and America's pastime, even though we know it's football season now and people get crazy, but playoffs, baseball, and football season, like the fall, gentlemen. Oh, it's good. I get I get the hair raises on the back of my <laughs> neck. It's it's phenomenal. Case, and I think I'm gonna add this: the fact that Gepi runs the Miracle League and that Pujols is involved in something exactly the same way that yeah. you've started over the years. You know what I mean? So, like again, I think just the powers that be come together at that. Gebby gets his picture. I know him very well, too, for, for the years of being involved in the Miracle League. And my brother-in-law has Down syndrome. He plays in, in, in Casey's League. So we've been tied together. I mean, I used to fly in from Jersey when I was still living there to help Case with the camps and stuff and then be involved in the Miracle League. So it goes way back and i think it's phenomenal that you know gabby got a chance to be on a pool holes in that case here, here, that. here's the here's oh, the nice, picture boo. Nice. I don't know if you oh saw. my goodness i, wow. I put oh, tim gephardt like, didn't sleep last night he did not <laughs> sleep last night i promise bro nice. he started to cry afterwards uh, he's like he had a shed a tear and i was like me and him were jumping up and down like boo boo it's <laughs> <laughs> incredible that's incredible. i was watching it though it was a great job on tv yeah. and everything I man you guys did a great job so nice. thank great you job brother. thank you yes, okay sir. well break us down yep. now give us so week, now give week, us week four, four. let's get into what we're really here for okay guys <laughs> all right yeah. let's get to the meat and potatoes here let's all right it. week four observations scoring was up a little bit this past week so some people came out and they feel a little bit better now that things settled down got a little bit more scoring from your top guys a few duds here and there but now we have a quarter of the season behind us you know actually a quarter of the season and they, they threw in a 17th game so we're right around the corner now we can make observations like real nfl teams do where do you have to make adjustments where can you you know what i mean pivot now and what kind of trends do we see so again i like this part of the year because we have a little bit of you know a little bit of traction now to get going moving forward so nice. you know the first thing i'll say to you the indianapolis colts i mean that offensive line we looked out on paper, you know, with Quentin Nelson and those boys, and we said, man, this is going to be an unbelievable line. I mean, hey, the consensus number one overall pick, Jonathan Taylor. Why do you do that? Well, he had a phenomenal year last year, and that line is beastly, and you figured, hey, they ran it against your will last year. They'll do it again this year. Well, let's not forget about pass protection. That hasn't transpired as well. So Jonathan Taylor's nicked up. He got hurt, okay? He hasn't really done anything to justify the number one overall pick, and then all of a sudden you can't really – keep Matt Ryan, you know what I mean, protected. So, you know, he can't get the ball to Michael Pittman Jr. And I have a lot of shares of him, so that's not good. It's just not a good situation right now, and, and Indianapolis has to figure it out. The next team I'll talk about in football, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, they're no Nobody's pushover anymore, gentlemen. Like they had a scare in Philadelphia, down in Philadelphia, in that rainy, nasty, windy condition, and they were fighting. And I'll tell you what, there's talent on both sides of the ball. They spent a lot of money. They have a lot of high draft capital over the years. I just really like what I see out of the Jacksonville Jaguars team as a whole. And I feel like they're going to be competitive in a lot of games this year. So that's nice to see. The next thing I'll tell you, the returning champions. They look like anything but the returning Super Bowl champions. I mean, Matthew Stafford, that running game, you know, defensively, they can't really get the stop when they need it, although they do have talent with Jalen Ramsey and obviously Aaron Donald. 
but you take away Von Miller, you're not getting as much pressure on the quarterback. So the Super Bowl champs just, I mean, you talk about a hangover and how hard it is to repeat. We're seeing that. Like at this point, I don't know if that team makes the playoffs. I really don't. And, you know, Matthew Stafford, the fire that I see in their eyes, it's just, it's not the same, gentlemen. I mean, it's too hard week in and week out in the NFL to, 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 to win. Do they know? have the championship hangover, Bill? You know what I mean? When you, yeah. you win the championship, you're like, yeah, we did it. And then you're like, uh-oh. Listen, now? listen, just Matthew Stafford going from Detroit where, you know, he just felt like he was in exile for years and then getting a chance to be with McVay and everything that happened last year was magical. You take each year in the NFL and you and you and you and you, and you, and you can quantify it you know, by itself. And last year was a dream year for them. You come back this year and just it just has not transpired. And it does not look good. A lot of season left, but they got to figure it out over there. Then, the, oh, oh, the last team I'll talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Guess what? A lot of people had them winning division. A lot of people had them actually going to you know pretty far in the playoffs you know at this point they're justifying all those things they really don't have any weaknesses on that team they won a tough game where they're down 14 nothing to a young team in a, in a stormy you know windy windy environment you know and they weathered the storm no pun intended they sure did all right so you know <laughs> they, they, they come back from 14 nothing they wound up winning that game and you know here they are at 4-0 right now and they just have so many levels of their team that you gotta like so that's my week four observations gentlemen you guys got anything you want to add to it well uh, uh well my one thing is tom brady mm. what about tom brady hey listen they came out the box they came at him hard and bam, they, he, you know, he couldn't figure it out again. But hey, listen, he's a great team. And uh, one other, one other thing I, I looked at too. Divorce <clears throat> papers, by the way, too, for Brady coming. I just read. Whoa, yeah. are you serious? Yeah, that's what, the, that's what the post said yesterday. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, he's gonna go. Unde- well, he's gonna go just, undefeated the rest just, of the year. That's what that means. <laughs> I, I guess he's got other things on his mind besides yeah. throwing touchdown passes right now. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, tough. I mean, um, sorry, that's not a great thing. Hopefully, that's not true. But anyway, <laughs> that probably is true. But whatever. I'm not. I'm not the divorce court here. Well, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> boo. What about this week for the waiver wires, man? Like, <clears throat> who are we looking to pick up? Who are we looking to drop? All that stuff. All right, man. You know what? I shout out with the quarterbacks, man. Geno Smith. Holy cow! Wow. Like. Geno Smith, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I am. I, I told you this guy kind of looked different. You know, one of the things that I always said, and this, again, makes me the fantasy guru, is that I love football. I played football. I played sports at a high level. So I kind of feel like I know what I'm looking at. I'm not just the average fan that doesn't know. I watch the line when they play. I watch certain positions while I'm watching the game. I don't just watch where the ball is. So you got to understand that about me, Case. Okay, I'm not like you, Case. Let's go. I, watch, Let's go. I watch everything on the field, all right? He's like, oh, good. He caught the ball. He's got a touchdown. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm watching the line, watching the boys, the big uglies get after it. I'm watching, watching the flow of the game. Love so it. Gino Smith just, he just looked different. We talked about being with the Jets and how, you know, for many guys running through there for a 10 year period, it just didn't work out. The guy looks good. If you had him starting in your fantasy league last year, last week, you did pretty well. He's got to be somebody you can consider. I mean, he's thrown to that Megatron target we talked about. You know, in, in, in Metcalf, it's starting to come together. Lockett's always been very good. You know, Penny goes off and has a good game last week. Geno Smith, a guy you got to pick up. The other guy is Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater has always been able to throw a pretty good deep ball in this game. He gets the Miami job. And after what happened to Tua, listen, we're not going to waste any time on here. It's just the NFL screwed up. I noticed it when it happened. Anytime you stumble twice and you tell me it's your back, it's okay. You can tell me it's your back. Go sit down, <laughs> take your helmet off. <laughs> Enjoy some hot cocoa. Oh. Okay, well, not in Florida. You know, not in Florida. Enjoy, uh, you know, some iced coffee and sit the hell down. Yeah. You're not playing. <laughs> and so I don't even understand what happened there, and I don't want to try to understand it. The NFL, man, sometimes it's just like all this player safety stuff, and then you have something like that, and it's like, man, he's playing in, in that game and then comes back on Thursday night and gets slammed on his head, and it's like, did you see his fingers? Like, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. Anyway. Wait, I got a real quick story on that. Was, uh, yeah. I heard this from uh... – one of the NFL guys I work with now. So Mike Holmgren used to be the, uh, like some sort of rules committee head. He was work, working for the league or he was on the committee for the league. And this person told me that back in the day, he used to say, what are the three guys at the bar say? So specifically they were talking about, remember the Des Bryant catch that wasn't a catch, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Holmgren's yes. big thing about changing the rules and, 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 and all the safety measures or whatever. is like, if the three guys at the bar agree, then we got to make the rule whatever they agree upon because that's yeah. what we're all about. And this is the yeah. same thing. The optics. If you saw Tua the other day, you're like, oh, wow, he looks like he's got a concussion. Whether he did or didn't, it looked like he had it. Don't put him out right. there. And by the way, right. one other point on that, they activated their third-string quarterback for that game. Nobody activates their third-string <laughs> quarterback in the NFL. So that was a little weird. Anyway, 
Keep going. Sorry. Oh, good point. My music. Good point. Teddy, Bridgewater, yeah. Teddy, Br- Teddy Bridgewater is throwing the ball to Tyreek Hill and, 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 and Waddle. Teddy's never really had a deep threat like that. And he's always been able to throw that nice, lofty, deep ball that I always like. So an intriguing guy. You know, I'm not saying you got to go yeah. out, but not bad for your backup the guy you might have to stream and put in there. The other guy is Kenny Pickett. Guys, Kenny fucking Pickett, okay? <laughs> Listen, we've been waiting a while in Pittsburgh. We've seen it. I mean, Mitch Trubisky with the same face coming out there, trying to lead us to victory. Like, I, I, it just hasn't happened. They get Kenny Pickett in the game. Yes, he had three interceptions. But, you know, I'm a beloved diehard Steeler fan. So of those three interceptions, one was a Hail Mary at the end of the first half that, you know, he tried to get in and the other two actually hit off Steelers receivers hands. Okay. You know, Chase Claypool, whenever you figure out how to use your six foot four frame and go up and high point a ball, give me a call. Okay. Cause if you need some help, I can teach you how to do that. Okay. He jumps in the air. Listen, the momentum of the, of the stadium is going crazy. You're at home. You, you, you got the momentum on your side. He throws a deep ball. Granted it was eventually double coverage, but Chase got himself in position to make the play. Jumps in the air only to short arm it down here. It bounces off his hands and into a jet defender for an interception. Disgusting display of athleticism. And again, Claypool last year with Ben. Ben would throw it up to him like once or twice a game because that was the only play they had. And he would like jump and di- dude, you're six foot four. Box out the guy like a basketball <laughs> player. Suck the ball in with your hands and and have the crowd and the momentum and be a hero. That's no, a you can't do it, Chase. I'm done with you. So <laughs> Kenny Pickett just has an it factor that guys. He made a throw. They would blitz him down on the goal line. Literally hit him under his chin in his thing as he throws it to Firemuth and it gets down to the one yard line. Then he throws it in. That throw alone yeah. is something that you can't teach. He also had a back shoulder throw to Pickens. Yeah. Who I mean, yeah, to to George Pickens who now. You know, six for 102. Immediately when he came in the game, he started throwing them. So it makes Pickens like you got to you got to start understanding Pickens is going to be a player now. Yeah, thirteen He's passes. By, thirteen passes by Pickett. None of them hit the ground. Ten completions, three interceptions. Yeah, and three inter- crazy, right? great, unbelievable point. But like you got to love that. I don't like when the ball hits the ground. <laughs> yeah. So again, he threw this back shoulder throw for thirty yards to Pickens. It was. It was literally like the guy was draped all over him. Perfect throw. Rodgers and Brady have done it a million times to those guys, mm. a la a little Troy Aikman, Michael Irving, where it's boom, right here on the sideline, and there was nothing you could do about it. Stole 30 yards from them. I'm like, nice. Mitch hasn't made that throw all year. So, mm-hmm. Kenny, moving forward, all right? Yeah, good. Going to the running backs. Tyler Algier. Tyler Algier, Atlanta Falcons. I mean, Coderell Patterson, yeah, he's got the guitar. Coderell Patterson basically <laughs> went down to, uh, with a knee for the IR. So for four weeks, he's out. Algier came in, 10 carries for 84 yards, caught another ball for about 20 yards, had 104 total yards. Now they have Caleb Huntley, who also scored a touchdown and did pretty well with his carries. But I think they've always liked Tyler Algier and they want to get him involved. So take a look at both those guys. The other running back group is Mike Boone and Latavius Murray. Javante Williams went down with an ACL, is done for the year. Terrible news, especially, you know what I mean? Again, you don't want to lose your running back for a year. But Mike Boone, who was in Minnesota, always passed the eye test, even when he was with the Vikings, goes over and lands in Denver. Now, you got Melvin Gordon still there, but Melvin Gordon has five fumbles on the year, and he's, like, not on the top of anybody's list right now. Still very talented, still gets good yards per carry and can catch the ball. But you're not going to be on the field anywhere in the NFL if you can't hold on to the football. So, you know, Nathaniel Hackett's got to make a decision. I think Mike Boone was kind of that next man up, and he looked good. But then they go ahead and sign Latavius Murray off the Saints practice squad. Mm -hmm. And, oh, by the way, Latavius Murray came off the street last week for the Saints Mm -hmm. and had 10 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown up in London against the Vikings and looked very spry, might I add. Yeah, so which guy? Very spry. Which guy do you like better? Which guy do you like better? I, I, honestly, I don't. I, I look at both oh, those guys true 50 50. I want a piece of one of them if I can, and hopefully one of them strikes. Because nice. again, if you have, if you don't don't have a lot of room on your on your bench you can't just grab both those guys and say mm. it's too much fighting and pulling and clawing so you got to just say hey listen Boone's there he knows the system but Latavius is bigger stronger you know you get the you know they're both going to work it out and then you you still have Melvin Gordon there so I don't know gotcha. all right so again the other guys with with Jonathan Taylor being nicked up obviously Naheem Hines but most people should have him already but if he's out there go get him and the other guy that I love that I've talked about from the beginning Brian Robertson ladies and gentlemen mm. Brian Robertson in Washington got shot in the leg in the Tusky in the old tush you know what I mean but uh <laughs> he's coming back every all the account- literally, literally got shot in the leg got literally. shot in the leg in the ass I think part yeah. of his ass and part of his leg good analysis yes so uh he's coming back and all accounts and all you know 
everything they've heard about him is that he's actually healthy. He's running well. He's running good. So if they activate him this week, he was already taken over for Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson has done nothing to take that job away from him. I think Brian Robinson immediately comes in that game and gets you more of what Washington wants, which is downhill, smash mouth, play action with Wentz. I think Washington gets a little bit better just by the presence of Brian Robinson. But we'll see how that works out. All right. Love it. Moving, moving right along, gentlemen, to wide receivers real quick. Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce, rookie, no catches in his first game, dropped the touchdown pass. People were really down on him. Hey, hey, relax. Mm. Stop your nonsense, all right? <laughs> week one in the NFL. Has the concussion, doesn't play in week two. Week three has three balls for 61 yards. Last week, four balls for 80 yards. You see the ascension. You see the rookie trying to get his feet underneath him. You see Indianapolis struggling, trying to find a number two receiver. You know, Matty Ryan throwing the ball on Michael Pittman Jr. Well, if you can't run the ball and I take away your number one, where are you throwing it? Well, here comes Alex Pierce steadily on an incline. I think he's a guy that you can scoop up right now because he's out there and you get some good value for him moving along for the rest of the year. I mean, a guy six for three, 212 pounds, you know, he, he's a big dude, you know what I mean? So I, I like him a lot. All right. And so the other guys that I like, I'm going to go to tight ends. No, I'm going to go to wide receiver. Keith, the guy that I talked about last week that I really, really enjoyed was Josh Reynolds, Amon Ross St. Brown for Detroit. First of all, we talked about Detroit. They're scoring in every quarter. You want a part oh, of that offense. I want, 45 on, points I, this past week, yeah. you know, is incredible. And so I, I love them. Yep. Yeah. I love Dan Campbell. I want to see Detroit yeah. win. I love, uh, I love, you know, what's the HBO show? Hard Knocks. Yeah, yeah. You watch Hard Knocks. I love the Lions. Let's go, Dan. Let's, yeah. let's finish they, off some teams. One they they're in like, the game every week. Like, they've, like, covered for, like, 13 straight games or something, like, out of control. They've been yeah. in, like, every single game they've played for a year and a half. It's crazy. I got to start gambling, Chinch. I got to start <laughs> oh, gambling. Yeah, yeah. If they're covering, I got to start gambling. <laughs> oh, go. Lord, have mercy, no. <laughs> but anyway, Josh Reynolds is a guy where last year at the end of the year, he came on strong. And got a good relationship with Jared Goff. You get Amon Ross St. Brown down with the ankle. I scooped up Josh Reynolds last week and played him in one of my leagues. Dude, eight for 71, a seven for 81 and a touchdown. The touchdown grab, when he grabbed it, it was like a snatch. He like took it away from somebody. And I looked at him and I'm like, oh, damn, Josh Reynolds, you put some weight on, son? Son, you hit the weight room? Get that protein? What are you doing? I was like, man, Josh Reynolds, okay. So, like, again, if you want shares of Detroit, like, just go get them. He's part of them. Um, so, I'm, I'm really happy with that. And, again, keep an eye on Amon Ross St. Brown. If he doesn't play this week, Josh Reynolds, an immediate start. If he does play, I'm interested to see, like, what kind of role DJ Shark has now because I think mm. Reynolds passed him up. So, I'm excited to see that. Nice. So, we'll see. Those are my wide receivers really this week. And the tight end position. I mean, you got a guy like Will Disley. He's just catching touchdown after touchdown. A little touchdown dependent. But we talked about the tight end, you know, like landscape, guys. Like, if you got a tight end out there that's catching touchdown passes, you know, ride the wave while you can until it, you know, until it, you know, until it runs out. But, you know, with Kyle Pitts and George Kittle and these big name guys not doing a damn thing, you know, Will, Will Disley doesn't look as bad as he used to, you mm -hmm. know. And not to mention my boy David Njoku. We talked about Njoku yeah. in the preseason. Yeah, he had two first games where guys probably do dropped them. Go ahead. I can't have no patience. You know, they can't, you know, relax. You know, they got to, you know, overreact case. A little bit like you, you know what I mean? A little overreaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? Chinch and I, we don't overreact. Yes, no. We sit back, we, we observe, we analyze, you know, we're yeah. strategic about it, you know? Yeah. So David and Joku, past two weeks, I mean, that's starting material, man. And he's, yeah. he's, he's caught a lot of balls. He looks good. I mean, you, you got to like what you're seeing out of Cleveland and him for the time being. So scoop him up. Nice. And the only other, you know, waiver wire transaction, I'll go to the defense, is my Jacksonville Jaguars defense. Mm. I scooped them up. I didn't play them last week. I scooped them up in two weeks last week because I, I always look ahead. This brain is always looking ahead. They're playing the Houston Texans this week and they have a very favorable matchup for the next, you know, four or five weeks. So you want to stream defenses and you want to be able to play guys like Jacksonville is a perfect defense to try to stream. Mm. They got a ton of money invested in that defense. They have Talent everywhere along that front seven. They get after you. They had an interception for a touchdown in Philly. A lot to like about that Jacksonville D as a plug and play for the next five weeks, boys. That's good bada stuff. Bing, I like it. Bada boom. That's boom. my waiver wire. All right. Now we're getting to nice. these nitty gritty, though. What happens now, boo? Moment we've been waiting for. Gentlemen, you know exactly what happens now. <laughs> a little segment we call Forget About It. Yes. All right? And so each week we kind of do three on both sides of it. You know, the Forget About It and the Forget About It where, you know, guys are dominating and we love what we see out of them. So I like to start with the low-grade guys and get these quiet guys out of the way. All right? The first guy we're going to talk about is my man, Gabe Davis. Man, did I like Gabe Davis coming into the season. I still like him. 
Let me add that. You know, he had the ankle injury. Anytime you got an ankle injury and you're not practicing every week and then you, oh, yeah, I'm ready to play. I'm 100% going to play. Well, that's not what the coaches think and, and plan for. And it's not what the quarterback is going through every week. So when you have guys that are like, oh, game time decisions, you got to be a little wary of those guys because they're not practicing during the week and they're not involved in the game plan and practice. So as I practice and I'm trying to get a feel for what's going on for the week, I want to make sure you're in there. So be wary of those guys. And lately with Gabe Davis, we're seeing that. The last two weeks have been really bad. But one one catch for 13 yards, <laughs> 2.3 points. Forget about it. Oof. Forget about forget it. Forget about Ooh. it. No good. Ooh. No good. Ooh. That Ooh. sounds like me in eighth grade football. <laughs> Just forget about it. Yeah, listen, listen. Never. I'll never forget about you. But listen, you know, Gabe Davis is playing my beloved Steelers this week. Two things. Jamison Crowder goes down with a broken ankle. I think he's done for a very long time. And Isaiah McKenzie is in concussion protocol. So literally, like, Gabe Davis, it doesn't happen this week. I am literally on alert and I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little scared about that. It has to happen this week against the Steelers who can't get off the field on third down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know what, Gabe, this week, I'm just going to forget about it. All right. (laughs) So our next guy, Amari Cooper, big Amari Cooper coming off back to back 27 and 25 point games respectively. Okay. He goes down to hot Atlanta. Ooh, the nice turf in hot Atlanta. You know, let's go. Let's get some bounce to me. One catch for nine yards. (laughs) Forget about about it. One catch for nine yards, gentlemen. You could do better than that. You know we call that. You know we call that in baseball poop soup. Poop soup. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Just, just, just forget about it. Move on. All right. (laughs) So Terry McLaurin, good old freaking Mister McLaurin. Okay, out there in Washington, man. Many, many years. Now again, a bad week. One, two decent weeks back to back. But Terry McLaurin, you and another guy here that I threw in, Mr. Mark Andrews. Oh, you never thought you'd hear that name in this podcast, right? For a uh, for a dud. But guess Killed what? Me. The reason why I put them both together, they both have the same stat line. Uh-huh. Two catches for 15 yards. <laughs> Terry McLaurin and Andrews, Mark Andrews. <laughs> Forgot about mm. it. You don't even want to, you don't even want to. Look at those numbers again no. and have to stare at them on your fantasy team. No. Two catches for 15 yards is not going to get it done. No. I'll tell you what. Forget about it. Move on. All right. All right. On to off. Forget about it, baby. Let's go. Josh Jacobs. You guys know the type of feelings I have for Josh Jacobs. And I've, I've said this from the beginning. I'm like, hey, Josh McDaniels. How about you get the guy 20 plus touches or 20 plus carries a game instead of trying to throw it and be all this fancy because you're 0 3 and you haven't won a game yet? But yet, Jacobs has like a 4.8, five yards per carry average. It's like, well, run the ball more. Run the ball more, control the clock. Don't leave it all into your quarterback's hands. Oh, what does Josh Jacobs do? He goes 28 carries for 144 yards and two touchdowns. Oh, a little icing on the cake. Throwing five receptions for 31 yards, and you can forget about it. (laughs) That is a big, big week for somebody that I needed, that we talked about. Hey, it's happening. Run the ball more, Josh McDaniels. You might win, and Josh Jacobs can ride me to fantasy championships. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Let's go. go. All right. The next guy, and another guy we talked about in those middle rounds that I needed, Rashad. Not quarter, but penny. Forget about it, Rashad. Okay? (laughs) This guy comes out this week, goes 17 carries for 151 yards, two touchdowns. Now, granted, it's it's against your boy Dan Campbell case. I'm sorry, but I needed every bit of it because I was (sighs) saying it wasn't Rashad. Shard Penny this week, I was really going to start getting worried. And again, another situation where I wasn't worried because of his 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 actual you know yards per carry. I mean, the guy's running the ball well. It's just they need opportunities, and he was able to bust two pretty long runs, a thirty something yarder and a forty yarder, and it came away with a huge day. So you know, well, one one catch for six more yards, a little icing, little bing, little sprinkle on the cake, and you can forget about it, Rashad. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and my last guy on this side of it is Mr. T.J. Hawkinson. Now, it sucks that I had to play against a guy in two damn leagues. You know, it never fails. I mean, this year has been the greatest year for me in terms of I play the highest scorer every week and, like, there he is staring me right in the face. But you know what? You know, you still get on his podcast because, I mean, it was an incredible outing, Mm -hmm. especially for a tight end. The guy goes eight catches, 
for 179 yards and two touchdowns. Sprinkle in a two-point conversion, a little sprinkle, and you can forget about it, baby. That's the highest score of the week, all right? Yeah. It's the highest yes. score of the week yeah. this week from a tight end position, you know? So, you know, if you had TJ Hawkinson, and the guys, he was, like, questionable, wasn't practicing all week. So, no. again, I just talked about being wary of that. I was wary of it, and I was like, oh, great. I'm playing against him in two weeks. No big deal. Bing, 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 no. bang. Get the fuck out of the guy was insane. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I right? was in a league where I had Andrews and and the other guy had him, and I was just watching, and I lost. The, oh, I lost oh, by one God. point. Ridiculous. Oh, those, those, one are point. Tough, those are tough weeks. Yeah, oh, that's a tough week. That's, that's a bad, the worst. That's a, the worst. Yeah, that's a bad. Yeah, that's a bad uh, situation. Yeah. There. But that's what I got for this week, boys. Right. Oh, boo, boo, boo! Right here, bro. Right here. <laughs> Incredible got job, the job. Terry Bradshaw. We're, we're bringing it home. Yeah. Terry Bradshaw rocking it. Unbelievable stuff, dude. The forget about it. Yeah. The waiver wires. The, the recap. I love it. And Chiefs by the way, by the way, one point. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Boo's got Boo's got a, a real job he has to go to. He gets up for this in the morning and then goes and has a, a <laughs> shitty day at work. So you guys better respect what this guy does every day for us. <laughs> exactly, dude. dude. This is where it's all about. Yeah. All right. This yeah. come on. Now, if I get fired, somebody's got to pick me up. So please, <laughs> yeah. when you put that out there, let's uh, let's have a backup plan. All yeah, right. Exactly. Dude, how about how about Boo's text this morning, Chase? Before we get going, he's like, "Hey guys, what are we doing? When are we getting on? I'm chomping at the bit. I'm dying <laughs> yeah, over here. I'm, 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 I'm salivating in the skin. corner. You're feeding me red meat. You know, well, Boo, Boo, we appreciate the energy, dude. We appreciate what you bring to the mayor's office podcast here with Chinch and I, the big Lambuski every Wednesday. Let's get it. Boys, for everyone out there, keep downloading, subscribe, and come join us every single day, Monday through Friday. We're getting it going. Love you guys. We'll see you guys. Chinch, I'll see you tomorrow. Boo, I'll see you next week. I'll probably see you at the Montana room at some point tomorrow night, (laughs) Thursday night football. You'll just be uh, grazing in my porch. We probably get there at 4 o'clock for a 9 o'clock game, so it'll be awesome. So, Leave some ribeyes out there for me. Appreciate it. (laughs) I will. See you, boys. Let's go.